Why don't we go somewhere we only know yeah. If you're alone, there's something I could show you Over the clouds, yeah, we've been there before So why don't we go, yeah, why don't we go, yeah Now I can feel the flame One kiss we fade away Changed me, oh, I, hey, uh, uh, see, I'm stepping through your eyes. I see myself dancing through the night. See, can I show you some place I like? And I could show you a good time. And why don't we go? Snap with me. We only know, yeah, hey, if you're alone, there's something I could show you. Over the clouds, yeah, we've been there before So why don't we go, yeah, why don't we go, yeah And mama said I should know better to fall in love with a stranger uh, But you feel so familiar, I'm not scared to be close to you And yeah, I met you on a Sunday, I made love on a Monday See, I think back it was a fun day, I wouldn't want it any other way, way, way Thank you for the snaps. I see myself dancing through the night. See, can I show you some place I and I could show you a good time? And why don't we go somewhere we only know? How about your lap? If you're alone, hey, uh, uh, over the clouds. Yeah, we've been there before. So why don't we? And the clap go, why don't we go somewhere we only know, yeah See, climb into me, into my waterfalls, yeah Over the clouds, yeah, we've been there before So why don't we go, yeah, why don't we go, yeah So I guess why to start, go, um, go, umi go, is a very fun word to say <laughs> Um, and it has a very special earthy meaning. So can you tell us what Umi means? And then what are some of your favorite places to be in nature? Umi means ocean in Japanese. I'm half Japanese. Shout out to my mom. Um, and I'm really grateful she named me Umi because it definitely reflects my energy and my purpose in life in a way. And I... Not just because you asked the question, I actually really love going to the ocean. I love a nice dip in the water. Um, and I also really love trees. Like, I love trees. Like, the trees in here are so kind. Like, that, I have a connection with that tree right there. That tree is like, feels like a sister to me or something. But I feel very connected to trees. And then I like climbing trees and feeling the wind on my hair. It's a good feeling. Who else likes trees? Give it up for trees. Yay! <laughs> There's a book, it's called either The Hidden Life of Trees or The Secret Life of Trees. If anyone knows what the correct one is, shout it out. Hidden? Yay! Okay, it's a really good one. And apparently trees build community with each other. So when you see a tree, especially if it's in an urban environment and it's kind of far away from its other tree friends, give it a little hug or say hello because it's kind of disconnected. They are all connected in community just like we are here right now. And that's a great book. Um, so to get into it, one of my favorite songs of yours is Butterfly. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great song. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. <laughs> And I think I love it so much because there's kind of this nature metaphor that's flowing throughout it and you're relating to the butterfly and you're like, I kind of want to like be like you or am I like you or what's happening? Um, and I think it's so cool when artists infuse nature themes throughout their music. Um, so what inspired you to write that song and what are some of your biggest inspirations in nature that translate into your artistry? I wrote that song when I was in college and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And I remember a lot of butterflies would fly by my window 
And I would always be like, wow, it must be nice to be a butterfly. Like you just get to fly all day and you don't really need a purpose or like you just get to exist. And then I was like, wait, I guess I'm kind of like a butterfly. Like it's not all that deep and it's not <laughs> all that figured out. And I guess I don't really know where I'm going and the butterfly doesn't really know where it's going. And I found a lot of peace in realizing the unseriousness of life in a way or like the gentleness of life and when I kind of just loosened my hands a little bit and let myself not know what I was doing I felt like that's when everything actually started to fall into place and feel more clear and this is butterfly 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 where you gonna go to tonight yeah Wish I was just like you, maybe then you'd take me high Away from it all again Away from my troubles and my sins yeah. Away from the fears inside Away from the fears I try to hide away Cause I just wanna make you smile I know that'll take a while Cause I'm trying to find myself And if you want to sing along, please And I just want to make you proud But I think that I'm running now Time, you sound so good To figure it out Take me on your wings and fly yeah. I wish I was just like you Maybe then I see the light And I could be free again Free from my troubles and my sins yeah. Free from the fears inside Free from the fears I try to hide away Cause I just wanna make you smile But I know that'll take a while Cause I'm, I'm trying to find myself yeah. And I just wanna make you proud But I think that I'm running now January and it's called Talking to the Wind and I think the wind actually inspires me a lot more than I even realize because I like to go outside when I'm confused and talk to the wind let the wind give me answers and it's often very simple like just be or let it go and um, sometimes it's like song lyrics or melodies so I have a lot of gratitude for the wind and anywhere I can feel the wind outside by a window a fan <laughs> Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, I think when it comes to environmental activism or activism in general, sometimes people don't really know where to start. And I think you can play any role, even if it's like an adjacent role. And I think creatives in particular are just, I feel like they're underrated when it comes to helping to spark movements of change. And I think it's been really cool, especially in the last week, seeing you utilize your platform in really beautiful and healing ways. Um, so what role do you think creatives can play in the movements that they care about, whether it's you know taking care of the earth, et cetera, whether it's writing a song about it, or um, yeah, what role can creatives play in the movements they care about? I love this question. I feel like creatives, artists, 
we, I feel like, first I want to say everybody's creative and everybody's an artist. So everyone can tune into this frequency. But to me, being an artist means that I'm able to see things before they are material and realize them into reality. And in some ways, that's my songs. In some ways, that's a movement. In some ways, that's advocacy, whatever it is. I feel like artists have a way of having deep trust for the unseen. And I think that really is like the definition of an artist is constantly just trusting in your intuition and the unseen and encouraging others to believe it with you. And so I think that that gives artists a lot of hope and a lot of foresight. And when that vision is being moved by, I think, positive energy and intention, you can really inspire a lot of people to to move with you and realize that within themselves. Be like, oh, shoot, that is possible. Or like, oh, shoot, I do believe that too. So um, that's how I like to use my platform and my voice, whether it's a song, whether it's environmentalism, a- advocacy, activism, whatever it is, yeah. I love that. Um, and there's that book with the circle and the dot in the middle. I think it's called The Creative Act or something like that. And it starts out that everyone can be an artist, you just have to find your medium. And it's kind of the same with activism. Anyone can be an activist, you just have to find your medium. And for me, I'm a little shy, I like to write, so I just like write social media copy and a little book every now and then. Um, And then I'm curious, I wanna recognize the artists in the building. So are there any singers, raise your hand, do you sing, do you dabble, okay. Are there any writers, poets in the building? It's very beautiful. Any painters, visual artists? Okay, Papa. Let's Papa. just give it. Let's give it. Let's give a clap to everybody. Thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. So I want to talk about your new music and your EP that's coming out. Um, what is the vibe? I know sometimes, sometimes EPs, um, they're such beautiful projects, and sometimes they feel like an interlude between albums, and sometimes. Um, you know, even more than that. What was the process like writing the EP and what does it mean to you? Mm, That's so fun to answer. I'm very excited for this EP. It's one of the first projects I'm releasing independently in a while. And it's been really nice to come back to my center there's this hat downstairs that said recording major label artist <laughs> and I was like oh kind of felt in a way I think um I just think in life in general there could be times where you lose who you are or you feel like you're creating to or sharing to make others happy and this EP was me just being like what makes me happy what do I want to sound like what do I want to create as this new version of myself Um, my last album, Forest in the City, I love that album. And it's a collection of me over the past like five years. This EP is like music I've made within the last nine months or so. So it's like very accurate to, to where I am right now. And it's called Talking to the Wind because throughout making the project, it's helped me reframe the idea of being lost I realized that when I when I went back to being independent, I was like, what the frig am I doing? I was like, I'm like in my butterfly era all over again. And then I realized like, oh shoot, life isn't like Google. Like I can't just type in like how to be happy or like what am I doing with my life? <laughs> you can't click enter and the answers aren't gonna come. The answers come very one step at a time, one day at a time. And so all the songs are made one step at a time, one day at a time. No, like did not have the full picture in mind. It just kind of revealed itself so I hope when people listen to it by the time you finish listening to it you feel like more clear about something or you feel inspired to take just one step like just that one answer you got it's um, feels like listening to the wind in a way so that's that's what it feels like it's an experience so EP is an experience um yeah But something I try to live by when it comes to activism is progress over perfection, especially in the sustainability space. Um, I think before I made my Instagram um, where I was talking about environmentalism, I thought I needed to like wear all beige and like only have mason jars and like fill them up with all of my trash. And I was like, I'm failing every day. Um, And it was really cool to meet other people and groups like Hike Club and Outdoor Afro and Latino Outdoors to be like, whoa, I can actually show up 
exactly as I am with my mom's like butter containers or whatever it is or using that cookie little con- Danish cookies that are not for cookies oh, oh, sewing the hair products and the hair products <laughs> and things like hair that ties. and then I realized I was like oh wait thrifting is also good for the planet and there are all of these things and it was great to know that progress is so much better than perfection when it comes to sustainability and then also just how we navigate throughout this world Um, So what are some learning lessons that you've had along your journey or some moments? Because I feel like failure can sometimes be our biggest teacher or having those moments where we feel lost. So it's a moment where you thought maybe it was a failure, but it turned into a situation. You're like, you know what? I'm becoming more of who I actually am. I think this EP, honestly, (laughs) was that because um, I took so long to decide if I even wanted to do it for a while. And then when I started doing it, I was like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? It felt wrong a lot of the times. Then it felt right the next moment. And then it felt wrong again. And um, I think every musical product, anything you create has that essence to it. I feel like it's never supposed to feel right the whole time because it changes a lot. Choosing the songs, I'm like, oh, I like this song. Oh, maybe I don't like the song. And you just be like, maybe I shouldn't have done it to begin with. Like, well, I'm just wasting my time or something. And then you just keep, you go, okay, I'm going to get up tomorrow and have a new brain and do it again. And you just, that, that's that been a big process for me. And I'm thinking more in the environmentalism realm too. I mean, I think there's a lot of ways, for example, when I'm touring where I try to be as sustainable as possible, but I'm also learning as I go of like changing up my rider, asking people like, please don't give me water bottles just give me like a big jug of water and then I have no water for the show and I'm like oh shoot okay I gotta reframe how I said that or like I'm like can we can we do like and it was just little things like that where I try my best and then I go up and down and I go left and right and then over time it settles in a place so I think like you said it's just important to try something than to do nothing at all um and I think the last thing I want to add is maybe another definition to being an artist is not stopping when you make a mistake it's just like the commitment to not ever giving up um so i think that what you said feels very much like a very artist focused kind of thought process so this is one that we sometimes ask people outside of earth sessions which is a little random but if you had to like if you're thinking about the earth and it had to have a sign like an astrological sign And don't just say an earth sign, just say an earth sign. (laughs) But what sign do you think the earth would be? I'm a Sagittarius, so I see Sagittarius everywhere I go. Um, But what sign do you think the earth would be? An Aquarius. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I say that because earth is so cool earth is so you can't put a finger on it earth is so random you can do so many things with your life there's no right or wrong i just got back from a tour in asia and i'm just like every two hours i'm in a new country and people are on walking on the different side of the street breakfast is a completely different concept in every place like there's just no right way to do anything so i think that like spontaneity feels very aquarius to me and i feel like especially this generation we're such community centered like mm, people who aren't afraid to really make a change and to say something about anything that's passionate to them and to me that's very aquarius it's like i don't care what anybody thinks i'm passionate and i'm gonna stand up for it and it was just like very where we are now as a generation so Shout out to the Aquariuses, but also shout out to all the other signs. (laughs) They're all great. (laughs) I want to affirm for all of you, send you a prayer. You are here for a reason. Thank you for waking up this morning. Thank you for choosing to breathe alongside with me. Thank you for trusting in life every day. I want to remind you that everything is working out exactly as it's meant to be. Everything always has a way of fitting together. 
So I affirm to you, you are exactly where you are meant to be. You are loved. You are appreciated. And you are guided 